A ride through Klickitat County offers more than just a beautiful piece of Washington countryside. Bordered by the Columbia River Gorge in the south and the Yakima Valley wineries in the north, this is also the county where a good portion of our state's wind energy is being produced. Big windmills are seeding eastern Washington's rural soil where wind speeds average nearly 20 miles per hour. But hidden between these giant commercial windmills, a number of small wind turbines are sprouting up. Several small farmers have decided to harvest this abundant source of clean, renewable energy called wind. Ed Kennel is an engineer from Washington State University. He is a true Northwest wind pioneer. And I got involved in small wind because I thought it was going to be some kind of a solution after the first air oil boycott, which the first boycott occurred in 1972, and that kind of got me interested. So at that time I started building what were going to be residential size wind turbines, and uh, it turned out to be a lot harder than I thought. Ed installed his windmill three years ago on Luna Butte, overlooking Mount Adams. Luna Butte is uh, it's kind of an oddball butte in, in uh, in the ge geography here because it's it sits uh, perpendicular to the wind instead of linear like the Columbia Hills and uh, fortunately nobody was interested in the top because it's so windy nobody wanted to live up here so it was pretty easy to find. So this machine produces about I think 13,000 to 15,000 kilowatt hours a year between a good and bad year which is which is enough electricity for an average home. The wind turbine has blades, as you see, and there's, you know, unlike a water pumping windmill, there are very few blades. In it. And those blades just work like sails in a sailboat. And, uh, and the turbine spins, uh, and that spinning uh, turns a generator, which, uh, which generates electricity. And so it goes into a thing called an inverter, which, uh, which takes that energy, rectifies it into DC, and then synchronizes it with the utility grid, pumps it back into the utility grid. So this piece of power electronics is really critical. Um, to the whole functioning of the system. Ed's vision of a windmill on Luna Butte became a reality when he found support from the local nonprofit Northwest Seed. We are um, providing technical assistance to rural um, landowners who generally lack the capacity, um, the knowledge and experience and uh, the resources to implement these projects on their own. Jennifer, Ed, and a handful of others work together to start up a unique small wind co-op. The co-op now has 10 new windmills purring away in the northwest countryside. In most cases, the people were interested in the technology. They're interested in uh, cutting back on their power bill. They're interested in uh, uh, assisting the environment in some small way. You know, they all have different motives and, and reasons why they got involved, um, but they're all share the same uh, motivation of wanting to reduce their energy bill. Um, you know, some are more concerned about the environmental impacts of climate change, and that might be a reason why they're doing it as well. But the common thread is um, not wanting to participate, I guess, in the continuing escalation of uh, our dependence on fossil fuels. A bumpy ride downwind from Luna Butte we found another wind farmer, Gwen Bissetti, the owner and founder of the Grand Central Bakery in Portland and Seattle. I was sitting in my office um, in Seattle thinking, I think paying my bills probably or something, and, and thinking that it was time to look at some alternative energy for this, this house here. And I just idly um, Googled uh, wind power, or I can't even remember what I put in, and lo and behold, at the top comes Seraphin Electric, Goldendale, Washington. <laughs> Goldendale, Washington, and I don't know about this. So I picked up the phone, and I got Jonathan on the other end. And then I learned that he lives right over there. And we got in, connected with um, Northwest Seed. And then I discovered that, that Jennifer was right across the street from me in Pioneer Square. You know, so those are the stars were aligned. <laughs> I, I really had no choice at that point but, but to go ahead. So. Working little by little to make her house more energy efficient, Gwen decided three years ago to give her farm a power boost 
by harnessing the powerful Columbia River winds. My impetus was as much um, sort of a gesture to the environment as, as it was economic. We've reduced our electricity bill by about a third. It was, um, you know, a quote-unquote all-electric house when it was built, which, yeah. which was, you know, the thing in those days. But um, so we, we generated um, a little over 12,000 kilowatt hours um, in, in, in 2006, which would probably sustain a, an um, average household that was relatively energy efficient. The co-op and the partnership with Northwest Seed have been essential for assisting with development, construction, and financing. Once the turbine is up, owners share in the benefits of green tags, a system that, as Gwen explains, allows them to get credit for their wind energy production. You were um, Nike or something like that, and you had made a commitment to uh, a certain percentage of renewable um, energy, you could go ahead and use your um, fossil fuels or your electric off the grid just as you would ever do it, but you would get credit for, for my green production by paying for it. In other words, you buy at so many pennies a kilowatt hour, mm -hmm. you buy the the advance that you buy what what I've produced for the atmosphere. People like Gwen and Ed show how small individual initiatives push us to reassess the ways we produce and use energy. The thing about renewable energy is we all, I mean, everything we eat is renewable, right? You know, I and mean, we're just basically a renewable energy machine. You know, and uh, and the fact is is that the problem with the oil economies and this petroleum age that we're in is that it's not sustainable. You know, and it's going to come to an end. And it's, it's going to be economically driven, so there's going to be a real hardship on people uh, that have relied too heavily on oil. And you know, how we respond to that challenge is, you know, is going to bring, bring out the best and the brightest, I think, in our country. By greening the grid, they inspire change, one citizen at a time. Lens wet, they're so cute, he might make the film. <laughs> right. 